Hello, everyone. It's time for Van Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Costanas. This is episode 167, season seven. Today's date is October 1st, 2022. And thank you for joining me today. On today's program, I will talk about a couple of unusual things. Uh, first off, uh, the Red Owl grocery stores. They had a few locations in the Chicagoland area, but it was actually based in Minneapolis. So I'll talk about the history of that. Also, I'll talk about the 60th anniversary of the TV series, The Lucy Show, starring Lucille Ball. I will talk about its history and my wonderful memories of watching the show. And I still watch it to this day. But first off, we're going to go into a commercial break. And this program is brought to you by Certs Breath Mints. <laughs> uh, so it's click, click, two mints in one. <laughs> and this commercial is from 1975. Oh, this, this one was uh, memorable by anyone who grew up that area. So here's the commercial, and I'll be right back with the program. Thank you, everyone. Oh, my gosh, here they come. Give me a cert. I just gave you one. Well, sure, but it's gone. Certs keeps on working even after the candy's gone. Well, how can I be sure? Just take the Certs breath test. Breathe in. Feel a cool, clean taste? Uh Uh-huh. That tells you Certs with Retson is still at work keeping your breath fresh. (laughs) It's still working. (laughs) Certs, two mints in one. It keeps on working even after the candy's gone. ABC Sundays. Your favorite stars are ready for their close-up when Celebrity Jeopardy comes to prime time. Hosted by me, Maya Bialik. America's favorite quiz show is looking to the stars. It's the OG Jeopardy with celebrities. The brightest one will win a million dollars for charity. <laughs> Let's hope they've been reading more than screenplays. Maya Bialik hosts Celebrity Jeopardy. New Sundays, 8, 7 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. All right, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Certs Breath Mint. Uh, I'll give you a history of that wonderful product. <laughs> uh, this was introduced in 1956, and it was one of the first breath mint to be introduced in the market in the United States. And it's been there for a long, long, long time. You would find them at drug stores, convenience stores, even when you are shopping at a grocery store, you, see, you know, when you're uh, waiting in the checkout line, and it's on the side of all the candy displays. It was there. I uh, I had certs uh, over the years, and the uh, contained retson. That was the uh, ingredient. <laughs> so, and it gives that flavor. So, and it also gives those green flecks. Remember on the candies like that. And uh, and also the commercials that were famous for certs, click click, two mints in one. <laughs> that was a that was a uh, the slogan for that. I remember there was a one classic episode of Good Times that starred uh, Esther Roll, John Amos, and Jimmy Walker. And the episode was when JJ got uh, Jimmy Walker's character JJ got arrested, and uh, he was interrogated by the police and. And uh, he he was at the liquor store. He, he the the police thought he robbed it, but he didn't. And he says, "No, I was buying certs for my date." And he and he showed the click click. <laughs> That's a funny scene. I love that. And uh, over the years, it was on sale. But then, in all of a sudden, in 2018, they stopped making it, and it was discontinued in the United States. But I think it sold uh, elsewhere. Which I don't know why. Um, it's a shame. And uh, they came in a lot of flavors. And uh, let's see what flavors they had. Uh, they had cinnamon. <coughs> excuse me, cinnamon, mixed fruit, peppermint, spearmint, wintergreen. I didn't like cinnamon that much. I didn't care for it. I like spearmint or mixed fruit. I like that. Or wintergreen. Mm, peppermint's okay. But my favorite was spearmint. So that's a shame. So, like I said, it was a shame. So we have other breath mints. There's breath savers. It's sugarless, so that's good. And another famous uh, product, I think, it's Ron's Clorets. So breath mints uh, back then uh, was a big business and in the television industry. 
you know, for advertising. So that's, uh, I'm glad I played this commercial. It was a lot of fun. Okay. At the beginning of the program, I said I will talk about the Red Owl grocery stores in Chicago and the 60th anniversary of the television series, The Lucy Show, that starred Lucille Ball. Uh, before I start, I'm going to... Uh, uh, talk about, uh, not talk about, I'll mention a couple of things personally. Um, I went to the doctor th- this past week and uh, had a checkup. Uh, he says, you're fine. Uh, but then I got results that my cholesterol went up a bit. It, so um, my my doctor prescribed uh, some pills to lower it. I got to watch that. I hate that. Uh, he also, because my calcium went up. And it's unusual. So uh, yesterday I went for a RTH, I think, no, PTH, excuse me. That's for your thyroid. He tested that, took some blood. Uh, the nurse did. So I'm waiting for the results of that. So maybe it's my thyroid that's causing it. Because my mother has this condition. You know, she takes, uh, she has cholesterol and that, and she takes it for her thyroid. Uh, could be in genetic. I hope not. And, uh, but I got a funny feeling that's going to happen. <laughs> so that's fine. But it, it'll be under control. I started taking the statin uh, drug a couple of days ago. So I take one every day. We'll see what happens. Uh, I read somewhere in the inter- online that it takes about a month, four weeks to take effect, you know, to really go down. So we'll see. So I'm going to watch what I eat. Be careful. I can eat anything I want, but uh, small portions and uh, limit. And I still do my walk every day until the weather gets cold. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's a nice surprise. <laughs> okay, so right now I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the Red Owl grocery stores, and here's a little history of that. Okay, and the, it was a grocery chain, and that was headquartered in Hopkins, Minnesota, uh, right outside Minneapolis, St. Paul. And it was founded in 1922, 100 years ago. And uh, it started as a coal company. And then it opened their first store, but in Rochester, Minnesota. It's far away like that. And then they they opened more stores. And um, they opened one in Bismarck, North Dakota in 1927. And then, then they opened in the Chicagoland area in around November or December 1959. And uh, luckily I found the locations of the stores through the Chicago Trivium based on their ads. So I'm going to read off the locations and uh, that might trigger some memories for people who were there at the time or remembered it, you know, put a smile on their face. (laughs) But I find this store fascinating. I really do. So, So here we go. Okay. The locations of the Red Owl grocery store were, uh, they had one in Evanston at 430 Ash, Ashbury Avenue, also in Arlington Heights at 212 West Northwest Highway, also Wilmette and, at Wilmette and Ridge Road. Now, that was one of the first stores that opened in 1959. Okay. And uh, then in Lawrencewood, I think that's a shopping center. It's at Oakton and Waukegan Road. I think that's Niles or Morton Grove, I believe. The other one was at 79th and Western on the south side of Chicago. I didn't know that. Yeah. Because um, my mother worked at Nikki's Drive In right by the bus depot, you know, right there. Place is still there. Uh, she worked there when I was in high school. She was a waitress. And uh, I don't know where the Red Owl was located, on which corner. It couldn't have been, there was Quigley South across the street. Now it's uh, St. Rita. So it must have been across the street from that, you know, heading south or on the corner. Who knows? <laughs> the other one was at uh, 7400 North Clark Street, uh, about near Howard Street in the Rogers Park neighborhood. Also, it was in Chatham neighborhood on the south side at 78th and State. I didn't know that. I think uh, that was right before the Dan Ryan was built. Right there. And uh, let's see. And there was one in Oklahoma at 87th and Ridgeland, right right near my house. Right around there. And uh, it's funny because uh, right there in Ridgeland is uh, the Jewel Osco 
and uh but that's yeah that's a little soft of that but that was uh that was at the egg store where my mom shopped all the time it was a good store probably was in that location and the second one that opened uh the same time in the wilmette location was in lincolnwood at crawford and devon uh also pulaski <laughs> Also, it was at uh, 40, 44, 45 North Lincoln Avenue. Uh, that's at Lincoln and Sunnyside. That's about Lawrence Avenue on the northwest side. North side, that is. And the last one was at 1121 East 87th Street, and that's at Greenwood, which th- this address sounds very familiar to me because I think this was community. I talked about that in a previous podcast episode. That's what it was. So, yeah. So they had a total of about, what, six? Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven locations. Wow. That was big. But, you know, I posted about Red Owl uh, grocery store in the past, but a lot of people don't remember this store because probably why? Because it was briefly in the Chicagoland area and that's when then it then it just disappeared. And then uh so let's see. So they were sold in 1963 to the National Tea Company, which we all know is National Foods. We know that. So, you know, talk about that store someday. And then um, it was around for a long time, uh, in probably in Minnesota, until the 80s. And then, uh, so they were, uh, at the time, they had 440 stores. Over 400 stores uh, in Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, and North and South Dakota. Hmm. And then they uh, they sold it to a wholesaler called Super Value. Uh, I've heard of them. And then uh, that was happening in December 1988. And then they phased out the name and it was gone. So, and that was it. And uh, one famous uh, thing in television history about Red Owl was, uh, if you remember on the Mary Town Moore show, uh, the later opening credits where Mary is in a grocery store and she looks at some meat package and then she just and she makes a face and throws it back in the in the freezer <laughs> that was at red owl <laughs> she was at the meat department you know that's uh, interesting <laughs> you know so uh there are items for sale from red owl uh on ebay or any auction online auction you can find and it's kind of cool and i saw some pictures online while i was doing research and it looked very interesting so i'm like it looked nice. And uh, so that's a shame. You know, so uh, back in the late 50s and early 60s or or beyond that, a lot of grocery stores opened and they were like in competition. You know, so like, for example, in Chicago, there was Hilo, Jewel, of course, Dominic's, National, uh, Surtis Saver, Omni. <laughs> You name it, they had it. <laughs> also, what was the other one? Uh, yeah, Omni. And uh, there was a Sean. Uh, remember from France. Uh, there was one in Bridgeview. I remember that one. So there were a lot of them at the time. And uh, I did, uh, I think I did a couple of videos of that, of uh, grocery store. So you can check them out on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, if you'd like. Okay. Next up, I will talk about the Lucy Show, and uh, it's today. It's their 60th anniversary. Oh, how time flies! And of course, it starred Lucille Ball as Lucy Carmichael. And uh, this time, this was her second series, and uh, it premiered on October 1st, 1962. It ended March 11, 1968. Ran for six seasons. Uh, the first season was aired in black and white, and the rest were color. So you get to see the first time in Lucy in color on TV. I think she was before on color. I don't know. And uh, we're up for 30 uh, minutes, you know, half an hour. And it starred, of course, like I said, Lucille Ball as Lucy Carmichael. Also in the cast was Vivian Vance, who played Vivian Bagley. And, you know, she was famous for Ethel Mertz and... They asked her to be on the show, and she said, uh, I will be on the show if I don't want to be Ethel anymore because I'm typecast, and lots of old people call me. And so they changed it, and she was kind of frumpy, and if you remember from I Love Lucy, but they uh, made her pretty, you know, and uh, she said yes. So, and uh, 
she was also the first div- uh, first divorce woman on television. This is in history ever, you know. But uh, Lucy was a widow, and she had two children, uh, Jerry and Chris, and Vi- and Vivian had uh, Sherman. And she was, but she, he lived with it with, lived with her. <laughs> When the first when the show got started, um, uh, because uh, CBS it aired on CBS, they wanted her to come back, you know, and uh, she, she didn't want to. She wanted to go on stage. She was living in New York, but she got injured when she did a musical Wildcat, and that was the end of that. And so they convinced her, and then they uh, so she started on the show, and then at, at and then. Um, she was divorced from Dizzy Arnaz in 1960, and then she married Gary Morton, which he was very involved with the show and uh, with that. Then, um, let's see what else. Uh, so the plot was the these women and their children were, lived in a house they shared, and, you know, uh, Vivian was a, a tenant, and she paid rent all the time, and they got into wacky situations, just like I Love Lucy. I love that, you know, and uh, it was funny. It's a funny show, you know, It's a, and it aired on Monday nights, just like I Love Lucy, which is great. And uh, also in the cast, well, the first season, uh, that is, was uh, Harry Connors. He played the next-door neighbor. That was by Dick Ma- Dick Martin, half of Rowan and Martin, who did Laughing later on. Uh, he was only there for a little while, and then they had a banker, his name was Mr. Barnes, Barnes Doll, Barnes Doll. I can't pronounce his name. Uh, that was played by Charles Lane. You've seen him in a lot of t- television shows. He he wore glasses and uh, he was always grumpy. He was also in It's a Wonderful Life, if you've seen him there in the movie. And uh, he was the banker. And then um, that's I like the I like the first three seasons of the show. It was uh, that featured Lucy and Viv and the kids, but then it changed later on. I will get to that later, you know. And uh, then in the second season, it turned into color, and then uh, Mr. Bronsdale left, and then Gail Gordon came up came on board as Theodore J. Movie, Mrs. Carmichael. <laughs> I love when that he got mad at her all the time. Well, she deserved it. She did dumb stuff, <laughs> and uh, he got irritated by her. But um, he was a, he was supposed to come in the first season, but I heard he was on Dennis the Menace. He was starring in the last season of the show because it was Joseph Kearns who played Mister Wilson. He died unexpectedly, so Gail Gordon took his place. So he, Lucy couldn't get him. So once that show was canceled, that is Dennis the Menace, he was free. And then Lucy asked him to come on board, and he was there through the entire run. And uh, there were situations, there were, there were a lot of classic episodes. And my favorite is when he was introduced for the first time, they both were locked in a bank vault. <laughs> and uh, they didn't have much, they didn't have any food, and all they had was uncooked macaroni. <laughs> so that was good. And they were playing poker. With uh, a deck of uh, children's cards that Lucy Buffer, her son, and they were adapted into poker, and it was uh, there was a scene, and it's hilarious. I really love that. Okay, so uh, like I said, the first three seasons were great, and then the fourth season changed, and then um, uh, Vivian Vance left because she was commuting from Connecticut to California. And uh, that was too much for her. And uh, but she came back occasionally. Thank God for that. So the only people who were there for the fourth season was Lucy and Mr. Mooney, and he was transferred there. So they didn't they didn't have much of a supporting cast. They had uh, Mary Jane Lewis, who played by uh, I forgot her name, <laughs> Mary Jane Croft. <laughs> Her husband was the executive producer at the time, and uh, she was kind of, she was sort of the Vivian, you know, she substituted for Vivian, but she was there all the time, helping her, and a lot of uh, movie stars came, and a lot of TV stars, guest starred on the show, and uh, and then Lucy eventually worked at the bank with Mr. Moody, and I don't know, could have fired her a long time ago, but uh, she stayed. <laughs> 
So I like that. Also, Lucille Ball's children, her real life children, starred in a few episodes. Lucy Arnaz, Desi Arnaz Jr., they were in there yeah, as well. Okay, right now I'm going to play the theme song of the first season of the Lucy show that's in black and white, and it's sponsored by Dream Whip. They still have this product. It's still on the market. So here is uh, the first, uh, the opening credits of the Lucy Show season one. Thank you, everyone. The Lucy Show, starring Lucille Ball, co-starring Vivian Vance. Brought to you by new, richer-tasting Dream Whip, the light, fluffy dessert topping that won't wilt. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the opening credits of The Lucy Show. That's from Season 1, sponsored by Dream Whip. I don't think my mother ever bought this product. I don't remember at all. I heard it's good. (laughs) Anyway, um, The Lucy Show um, had a lot of uh, guest stars, uh, famous people. There was Dean Martin. There was Carol Burnett. There was Don Rickles. uh, There was uh, Joan Crawford. That's the infamous one. (laughs) Oh, my God. And, uh, yeah, there were so many. Frankie Avalon. There was Mickey Rooney. You know, and uh, believe it or not, Fred Mertz appeared in his last uh, in his last TV appearance, he ple- he appeared on the Lucy Show, and uh, it was wonderful. And uh, he appeared, and then and then he passed away later later on. So that was uh, that was nice. He was starring in My Three Sons at the time, you know, Fred McMurray. And uh, the show ended in March 11, 1968. Uh, that was Lucy's decision, and because she wanted to. Starring another show featuring her children, you know, Dizzy Arnaz Jr. and Lucy Arnaz, and for Here's Lucy. It premiered on 1968 and ended in 1973. That ran for six years. And that was a good show. I like that. And uh, I have I have the shows on, mem- on DVD, all of them. I have uh, I Love Lucy, uh, the first two in Blu-ray. I hope the rest are going to be released. I'm hoping for that. Also, the Lucy Show. I remember when it was announced that the I think it was 2012. They announced that the first season will be released on on DVD, and I got excited, so I bought that. <laughs> and uh, also, the Here's Lucy was also released at. Uh, oh, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. It was first released on July 21st, 20, 2009. And then, uh, then Here's Lucy was released on DVD as well. So I got all of them. I got all of them like that. And uh, so sometimes I have a Lucy marathon to watch if, if I'm in the mood or if I have a bad day, I have a crappy day, you know, like uh, stressed out. You plop in the DVD, watch a couple of episodes, and all the stress disappears. <laughs> That's wonderful. I like that. As for my memories of watching the show in Chicago, uh, at an early age, I remember the rerun. I didn't watch it when it originally aired. I was uh, too young. I watched the reruns, and they aired them in, on, early in the morning every day on CBS on WBBM Channel 2, like about 9 o'clock or so. I remember watching that uh, during the summer. I caught that, and that ran for about a few years. Then it went to syndication, and it premiered in uh, in Chicago on WFLD TV Channel Thirty Two. And I remember, and I was excited to watch it. it aired about five o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, I couldn't wait! I mean, it was great. I watched that. And I remember the first episode. Um, they didn't show the first season. They didn't show the black and white ones, which was disappointing. They showed the color ones. You know, and the first episode was Lucy Gold's Duck Honey. <laughs> that was funny. My favorite one was the birthday parties. I like that one. And uh, I remember they heavily advertised it uh, during that time before it premiered, you know, for their fall premiere. 
And they said Discover uh, Channel 32 and discovered the Lucy show. And I remember the, uh, the, the logo of Channel 32 was sliding through the left like that. And uh, a lot, a couple other shows that premiered that time. Um, I'm thinking, yeah, I think it was the Beverly Hillbillies also. And also Night Gallery. And that went into syndication. That was a big deal back then. Uh, I think Night Gallery and aired at 10 o'clock yeah, for an hour. Remember that the ads, the ads were scary. I talked about that show uh, previously on another podcast. And uh, so this day, I still watch the show. It's still entertaining. Lucille Ball it was magnificent. You know, she's a television icon. What can go wrong? You know, and... Uh, Younger generation today, just a watcher, not like before, but a lot of people are like, huh, who is she? <laughs> Fine. To each his own. You know, parents got to introduce their kids to it. They have to do that. And uh, I post uh, things on Facebook about the show as well, you know. And uh, let's see. So uh, they're big Lucy fans on Facebook and Twitter. So that's kind of cool. Okay, that'll be all for today's show. Uh, I discussed the uh, Red Owl grocery stores in Chicago and also the 60th anniversary of the TV series The Lucy Show that starred Lucille Ball. Uh, I will do another podcast next week, but I will not do one Tuesday. I decided because it's my birthday. I don't want to spend my birthday doing a podcast. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Because I know I'm going to get a lot of greetings and uh, I'm going to be too busy. You know, I'll be too distracted. So it's a special day. I'll turn 59. You know, and uh, probably do another one next weekend. We'll see about that. Uh, for my other uh, podcast, uh, TV Oblivion, I'll probably do one tomorrow morning. Um, you can find those. Uh, you can find both on wherever podcasts are available, any app. Uh Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Breaker, Overcast, Amazon Music, Spotify. Uh, I think it's an Audible. I think it is, if you check it out. Or Audacity. I think it's there, too, if you, you know, just uh, click on the app and see. Also, these, this episode will be publish, published, excuse me, on my YouTube channel, Van Chicago Land Stories. So uh, if you don't want to use an app on your phone or tablet, you don't have to. Just listen on my YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, do a search, Fan of Chicago Land Stories, and boom, there it is. You will find it. Also, last announcement. Uh, today uh, is the the uh, television special that will debut tonight at 8 o'clock uh, Chicago time. It is Svenguli Uncrypted. It will air on MeTV, and I will probably be in this special. Uh, they had a Svenguli Day in Berwyn. They, uh, they, the mayor of Berwyn handed the key to Svenguli. I was there. It was hilarious. And we did a little song about Berwyn. I think it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. And uh, there was a Zoom meeting. I had a Zoom meeting with one of the producers, and she interviewed me. And I think that interview will be in that special. I hope it will be, and that'd be kind of cool. And if it is. I will take some screens. I will watch the show tonight. It's also repeated tomorrow on Sunday at four four in the afternoon. So if I'm there, I will take you know pause the DVR, take some screenshots, and I'll put it on social media to let everyone know I was in it. So I'm excited. It'll be a lot of fun. You know, I'm a big Sunguli fan. He's a wonderful man. He still makes me laugh to this day. <laughs> Okay, so this is Pico Stanis, your host of Van Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. Thank you for joining me. I had a wonderful time talk, t talking and uh, sharing my stories with you. So uh, take care, everyone. And here's Ray Ray, Ray Rayner, excuse me, <laughs> saying bye, 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 as usual on my program. And uh, so bye, bye for now for me. So long, everyone. We have to go. Bye, bye, bye.